Oh, the Big Bang. Uh, and they've inspected them with a microscope. This one's creased, this one's got some writing on, this one doesn't look correct. Ended up with like five dollars worth of rupees, so make sure your dollars are crispy crispy if you want to get them changed, otherwise yeah. they'll refuse to take them. Yeah. Anyway, we've just arrived at the Dutch Colonial Hospital. It's the old Dutch hospital it's called, so it's one of the oldest buildings in the Fort area and it dates back to about the 1680s. Um, I think it's now a heritage site and it's been transformed and it's got bars, cafes, shops in it, but the outside's really nice. So the whole, the, the old colonial curry house, not the hospital anymore, but let's go inside and check it out. <sighs> the old colonial Dutch hospital. Wash out really, been there for two minutes, there's just a few restaurants and bars and that's it. You have to come and see it. No hospitals, no x-ray room, no anything. <laughs> You're really proud. Can't even today. get a chlamydia <laughs> test, but you can get a curry and three bottles of Colesberg for 1500 rupees. Yeah, so it has been transformed. It doesn't it's now, seem that cheap to me. It's now a bar area mainly. We have to come and see it, see the building, since it's been here for a long time. There's also a restaurant inside called the Ministry of Crab. It's rated in the top 50 of Asian restaurants. So maybe worthwhile checking it out, but uh, there's no price on the menu, so we ran, me up instantly. we ran away really quickly. So now we're going to go to the Colombo Fort, which is about 300 meters that way. That's straight. How do they know? <laughs> what? What is We're now going to go to Colombo Fort. It's about 300 meters that way. We just went into a local money exchange. Change the dollars, the crease dollars, the written on dollars, no problem. So probably better not to go into a bank and go to a back street exchange. Didn't get a bank exchange rate either, pretty much the same as a bank. And now... We've got some food! Just stopped at the street side store, got some food, a vegetable sandwich and an egg sandwich, 200 rupees. And it's packaged in some printer paper that's come out of somewhere it's got per barrel oil base on it. <laughs> egg sandwich. It tastes like egg. Some egg and some potatoes. Quite spicy inside. Very nice. Maybe that's a vegetable one. Like a spicy smell, but it's like bread on the outside. further down from the hospital that's not a hospital is the fort that's not a fort. <laughs> it used to be where the fort was that was built by the Portuguese, used by the Dutch and later the British. It's now just called Colombo Fort area. Uh, there's a lot of old buildings, really old buildings. Some beautiful old buildings, really colonial style old buildings, fancy art deco on them. But now this is just the heart of the <laughs> business district. It's not art deco. What is it then? Deco. Oh, Deco's in the 1920s, no, followed slightly later by Art Nouveau, darling. Anyway, Colombo <laughs> Fort, financial area of Sri Lanka now, stock exchange is here also. Yeah, lots of banks, all the banks from around the world, loads of money exchanges. It's very busy with people, it's the middle of the working day. But it's very worth coming to have a look around at the old buildings and explore, find some local food. A good afternoon out.
just arrived at Colombo Fort Railway Station. This way you put your tickets up from if you booked any train journeys online, the railway station collection the ticket office thing is behind. Baby. Chicken curry, 350. Comes with like a bit of extras on it, some sambal, and then we've got some coconut roti and some other chutney or sambal to go with it. Coconut one, I think. Coconut chilies, onion. <laughs> Jayalanka Hotel just next to the train station. Um, chicken curry rice, some sambal, coconut rotis, milk tea, Pepsi, and some water. A couple of side dishes of sambal and lentils also. 960 rupees, which works out about £2.50. Total $3.50. Absolute bargain and absolutely delicious. Thank you. the Petta floating market so there's apparently 92 different stalls and some of those are on boats. Lucy's noticed there's a floating market just around the corner from the railway station so we've come to have a look. Uh, I'm not expecting a Thailand style floating market. Let's go and see what they've got. The water everywhere is very noticeably green and that is due to the city pollution from all the tuk-tuks and buses and fluorescent green. Yes. It doesn't look like you're going to be in there. <laughs> well. Quick trip around the floating market. There's nothing floating. Maybe there was once. Don't be so harsh. So there's a few nice restaurants. You can have some cheap local food by the river. Oh yeah, that one does look quite nice actually. Even take a boat ride on the luminous pond. There are some pelicans floating. Hello, Very nice. Pelicans. Um, but yeah, a little different. Not quite the market I had in my head, shall we say. There's a temple on some sort of like... It's called the Lotus Tower. Artichoke. It's a lotus flower. Definitely an artichoke or a silly react. <laughs> We're going to go and have a look, see what that is. So Just looked at the price as 20 US dollars per person to go up here. No. Outrageous to be fair. <laughs> That's really expensive. 7,500 Sri Lankan rupees. You can also have a meal at the top 9,500 extra. Yeah, that seems a lot to me. Um, I think we'll just look at the view off our hotel rooftop. I think that might do the same job. <laughs> but depending on what you like, if that's what you want to do, it's $20 for the price and it looks like this. Twenty dollars. <laughs> it's enough for me. There's a puppy dog. Puppy dog. 
We needed some laundry done, so I took it to a local laundry place. Usually super cheap, pay by the kilogram. Costs about two dollars for everything you own. Uh, we just took 40 pieces, new pairs of trousers, a few t-shirts, some pants, underwear, that kind of thing, socks. 23 US dollars, which sounds extortion. Well, anyway, it's done now. Just beware if you are paying for laundry in, particularly in the capital in Colombo. It's gonna be a little more expensive, 250 to 400 per piece. Watch out, guys. You can hear the sea and the waves crashing behind us. We are down at Galface Green, which is right next to the sea. I'm getting the spray in my face. <laughs> so bang in the centre of Colombo. Uh, it's a stretch of grass about a kilometre long, I think. Uh, it used to be Colt Patty Racetrack. Uh, yeah, I think in the 1860s when it was first kind of put into the city, the golf course, Race, horse race track uh, put here by one of the British. Henry Ward. Henry Ward, yeah. Now it's a sense of families to come, play, fly their kites, and have some amazing Sri Lankan street food which we've which we come here to try. Yeah, there's loads of little street food trucks all the way along. You can see them by the lights, so you can see what we can find. I can see some fish and some prawns. Really excited to try. Sounds good to me. seem to be selling a similar or the same sort of thing so we've got what is like a tiny little shrimp in some sort of a lentil cake I think and then they drop them in the fryer for a few minutes so it's hot some spicy sauce on or some sambal and then some onion and cabbage on top yeah. Fishy. Spicy sauce is nice, crispy veg, but okay. It's okay. Oh, that sauce is spicy. Next up, deep fried fish of some sort. Looks like it's already been well cooked and then again dropped in the oil and heated back through. Spicy sauce, fresh vegetables on. Ah. crunchy on the outside. It tastes a bit maybe like a sardine, but a big sardine. That's really nice. A bit of this fish. That's like a bit sardine-y. Anyway. Nice fish. Meaty. Tasty fish, a bit of like tuna or sardine, mackerel maybe. Spicy sauce on top, some crispy veggies. Next on the menu, we've got some of these. Like crispy balls, maybe some fish in there. Get some spicy sauce. Let's give it a try. Drop it on the floor first of all, just to see. And we'll give it a try. Like Indian Vada, potato Vada, whatever they call them. Up. Nice. Kind of a bit chewy. Sort of what the, the first prawn cake was made of. That sort of taste and texture, I think. Lentils, possibly.
loads of stores selling fruit, pineapple, mango, olives I think, and wood apple, all with chilli and sauce on. <laughs> you get the sweet pineapple, the salt on it, and then the chilli kick, that's really good. Always thought at some point in my life I'm going to try pineapple with chilies and salt. <laughs> Let's try it though. Always up for a new experience. The taste of the delicious pineapple, first of all. A little bit of chilli. A bit by the salt, followed by total disgustingness. <laughs> you know that chilli? Bizarrely, it's really nice. Can I get another one? Something I would never have thought of trying, but... That really works. The combination, the sweet, the salty and the chilli. That's really good. So a little box of salty chilli pineapple was... 200 rupees. Or 50p. 50 yeah. pence, 70 cents, 60 cents. Very nice. Good morning, it's not very often you will see us up bright and early at this time. So we've got to be going somewhere really special today. Lee's looking really impressed in the background as you can see by being awake at this hour. It's currently 4.23, so it's very early. Very good morning, it's 5am, we are at Colombo for train station. We're about to jump on the Ella Odyssey train, which is the train from Colombo to Badula. 10 hour train journey, passing through Kandy and everywhere. One of the most beautiful train rides in the world. Certainly the most beautiful train ride in Sri Lanka. Let's jump aboard, let's do it. Lucy's already on the train, miserable. The tickets for the train, 8,000 rupees if you book online. I think that's for two people, 4,000 each. It's a 10 hour journey. Make sure you get to the train station early, there are places already open where you can eat. We've just got some sandwiches, some uh, Sri Lanka sandwiches and some sweet tea, always nice in the morning. But yeah, train's nicer than I expected. I expected it to be a little old fashioned, nice seats, little tray table. Good to go, staff at the train station, very helpful. Also looks like there's a toilet for each compartment, which looks really good. Uh, my stomach's not in the best condition this morning. That's a bonus. Uh, very hot and humid today. Anyway, let's go and get back on the train and prepare for this amazing journey throughout basically half of Sri Lanka. quickly departed as well, I was just outside filming um, and just got back on and the train just went bam. Yeah, there was no like warning. No warning, everybody no on the train just started. Go. A couple of signs on each door though saying don't open the door while the train is moving, which I don't know if it's there for the safety of the station, because I want to hang out on the train. Oh. Then Mr Lee, we said don't open the door. But anyway, we're on our way. 
Yeah. 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 Trains were super fast. Probably going to be in the next station by a week on Tuesday. It's currently going 20 kilometers an hour, it's not what we're That's why it takes 10 hours. We got to the station a little bit early and the, all the shops outside the station were already open. Full of people, full of food. So we grabbed a milk tea and a couple of snacks to eat for breakfast. I'm not entirely sure what it is. And I think he ripped it off as well. As they do. Spicy, potatoey, smoldery. Put it in the box. Straight up. into the journey past a few small train stations all the way people walking down the tracks just missing the trains beautiful scenery the sun's just come up still only 6 30 a.m we are just coming up to our first tunnel We just saw a lady at the side of the road, or side of the train track, picking some flowers. She was picking them to give to God to take to the temple. years ago by some men with a chisel kilometer long tunnel So they do fried rice or Korean rice and teas. So there's also um, behind me on the train, there's a cafeteria cart. He said you go down and buy anything you want. Just going now to try and find a cafeteria and buy some tea. So right at the back end of the train is second class, third class, you walk through that and there's a small area that's, um, they don't look like first class to me, but they sell tea, sandwiches, bread, snacks, nuts, crisps, even beer. Really? Don't really, no need to bring any food, full catering available, the scenery is stunning, the train slows down at all the fantastic points, the driver tells you over the microphone where to look, right side, left side, 
also the train seems to become very noisy every time they're trying to save something then. Absolutely perfect so far. And this is not the best bit. The best bit is after candy. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's a lot of people. I'm going to be in the lava, and I'm going to be Peaceful, and we arrive at Candy, and the train is swarmed with. So it took three hours to get from Columbo Fort to Candy. Pretty much bang on three hours actually. It's been um, pretty empty until then. Yeah, now everybody's got on the train. It's filled up massively, but actually quite hard to get on when we did. So there's plenty of space for our bags. Yeah, and we're in our seats nice. And First part's really nice. So let's see what this part of the journey is like. Once the train gets to Candy, um, it goes backwards. So don't worry if you're on the wrong train, it's perfectly normal. Uh, a few people are panicking, but um, yep, yeah, just goes backwards for a while. Hopefully not all the way, because you miss the scene of it going backwards, but and it makes you feel a little bit sick, but yeah, beautiful. The scene of it is amazing. that we ordered five hours ago was finally arrived uh, fried rice there's some chicken in there also some sambal um, some crackers on the side some fried onions and some chilies it's quite reasonable actually 600 big portion though enough for two people so we ordered the food this morning maybe 7 30 uh, they finally brought the food on at great western station yeah. no need to bring food anyway it's plenty can eat this and have a beer? And the world's smallest spoon.
it was at this point in the journey that I got super sick. Um, I went to the bathroom. I don't know if it was the food from the train or the food from the night before. Likely the food from the night before. And I was violently ill. I was sat on the toilet, um, head down the toilet for the next two hours. I thought actually I was going to die. I was so, so ill. So I'm going to leave you to watch the rest of the journey. We ended up in Abadula. Uh, the Nine Arch Bridge is the most amazing place you will ever see on a train journey. Um, we spent the night in Badula and next we went to Gal the next morning. Um, on hindsight, we would have stopped the journey in Ella. Uh, no need to go to Padula, there's nothing there to see. Stop the train journey at Ella, finish there, and you can get a taxi or a tuk up to the Nine Art Bridge. We have arrived in Gal on the south coast of Sri Lanka after a long journey from Badula. We're going to show you all the best things to do in and around this historic city. As you'll notice from the end of the previous video, uh, we had to make a slight change of plan. We have taken a car and a driver from Badula to Gal. Yes, change uh, of plan, but these things happen, it's okay. Clouds and silver lining just stopped. So we've gone through Ella, which looks really nice, small town. Not sure yeah. there's a great deal to do, but looks nice to have a wander around some food. Come down, there's a place called Ravana Falls, beautiful waterfall um, just at the side of the road. A few little snack stalls, you can buy some sweet corn and uh, some bananas. Feed the monkeys if you want. Lucy loves a monkey. One for the ladies. So, I'm going to jump back in the car, head towards Gal, book to hotel, next to the beach, I'm going to chill there for a day and see if we can recover enough to spend the last week in Sri Lanka beach bound. Yeah. Also got a surprise for the next video, um, watch to the end if you want to know what that is. We have arrived in Galay. Does it matter? Just so you want to get right. 
We've arrived in Galway, or Gal, or Gaul, or Ghoul, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not Ghoul. We arrived in Gal, or Galway, or not quite sure how it's pronounced, everybody seems to pronounce it slightly differently. And we're in the fort area, which is an old fort from the 1800s. Um, it's a preserved area, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A lot of the buildings have been refurnished and redone and they're all white and full of archers. Um, opposite is, is one of the two churches. We are at All Saints Church in Gal on Church Street. It was built in 1868 and then commemorated in 1871 and opened as a church. It's built on the site of the former Gal Courthouse and execution grounds. The former hanging gallows are now where the present altar is. So we're going to have a little look inside. This is the church bell for the All Saints Church just over there. Don't know why it's not inside the church. It makes sense to put it there, but you know, each to their own. It's now raining. <laughs> <laughs> Directly across from the church bell is a Galley library, uh, a beautiful little library, open to members only, however if you want to pay 100 rupees to have a look around, that's the fee to get inside, well worth looking at. Also on Church Street is the Crook Church or the Dutch Reformed Church. This was built in 1755 and is one of the oldest Protestant, Protestant churches in the country that is still in use today. Let's go inside and have a look. Just went to go in the library anyway, as you said it's 200, not 100, although it clearly says 100 on the window and you can't take any pictures or film inside, but it looks really nice if you want to go and have a look around. It's the oldest library in Sri Lanka, built in 1832. A couple of beautiful churches, nice little churchyard also, we're going to walk our way down, no, no thank you boss. Constant <laughs> harassment for tuk tuks. <laughs> There's so many of them, and they're all, even if you're just trying to, you've got out of one and you're just crossing the road, they still want to offer you another ride. So. But like, no, thank you. Should do the trick, unfortunately, it doesn't. No, I'm going to talk to you about where you're from. A little bit firm about saying no, thank you, which Lee likes to talk to people, so it doesn't really work, but I am a bit firm, stern, so they tend to give up. So I'm just going to walk down the road just across from the church, a couple of hundred metres is the Maritime Museum of Sri Lanka. The Maritime Museum is located in the old Dutch warehouse that was built in 1640. Yeah. Um, the museum then later opened in 1992, but unfortunately was completely destroyed in the 2004 tsunami. Which was a disaster for Gal in general, one of the worst hit areas. We'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get to the coast. We didn't go inside the Maritime Museum, uh, but the fee is 550 rupees to get inside, which is around $1.50 or £1.25 UK. Directly across from the Maritime Museum is probably Sri Lanka's smallest fuel station. There's only one way into Galfort. It's between us! <laughs> and it's there. Looks as it's the way out also, but it can't possibly be the way out, it's the way in. Well, this side's the way in, the other side's the way out. So it's not the way in now. Yeah, it's, 
same bridge, it's the same way in and out. Anyway, there is the British coat of arms above it and 1868, which is when it was built and opened. A lot. The first time. Yeah, the doors have been taken off for restoration, it says. Not sure how they were trying to keep out, but um, it's not working anymore because there's no doors left. Maybe they need to give the Russians out. Directly across the road from the fort entrance are what used to be, I think, the old docks. Um, a few naval relics, maritime relics, a big anchor. I think now more a source of entertainment for Sri Lankan teenagers. Actually what's happening is there's some kids learning to swim. I don't think that the, the, the methodology is correct. They tie a rope around a child, throw him into the water and hope he survives and if he doesn't they just drag him in by the rope. Um, I'm not sure that works. There's also a very small, rather nice beach that you could probably take your shoes and socks off and have a little paddle. Cool your feet from the humid Sri Lankan sun beating down at 33 degrees today. This is quite probably the largest anchor I have ever seen in my entire life. Left here during the construction of the RMS Titanic, which was built in Sri Lanka, and then sent to Southampton where it sank. Probably due to the weight of this anchor. By the way, Titanic wasn't built in Sri Lanka. Just a little joke, you know what I mean? Joke. Also next to the fort gates, there are a couple of local Sri Lankan restaurants. Some Sri Lankan locals eating by the docks always tells you the food's really good. So this, Lucy. Yeah, this is the exit on the this other is, side of the This entrance. is the way out. Yeah, on the other side of the entrance. We're going to get started. Another way out of the fort area. One way in, which was the other one. One way out, which is this one. Just to, not the same same, just to clarify. the fourth entrance there is a small market selling lots of local antiques etc some authentic um, and some probably not however we came across one stall there's a young guy he's a local artist he has some beautiful things on his store his name is Rashika it's the guy take four and everything's original he's all made paintings uh, beads postcards fridge magnets Suggest if you come to the market, come and pay this guy a visit and spend a few dollars. It's also a good cause. He's also a dog lover if you like a dog. Um, some of the charity, some of the proceeds go to charity. Um, very beautiful store and all original. Well worth a look. Directly next to the market, there is a local restaurant. So they also do cooking classes, it's called Mamas. Uh, really nice, funny old lady, very big personality, very good character. Um, we just bought a cooking book, we don't have time to do the cooking class, but we just bought a cooking book if you want to sign it. Um, VIP, but it looks really good. It's a two hour class, it's $30, which is about 8,000 rupees, maybe 9,000. You get a certificate after the class, they cook about nine or ten different dishes. Tuna fish, dal curry, mango chutney, this is a big size okay. Just put small size, big size, different dish, just put curry. This is a pumpkin curry. Now we are morning glory. Then this is fun which you can eat after they've been cooked. If we were staying a little bit longer, we would do it ourselves. Looks fantastic, authentic, and a good insight into Sri Lankan food. I think unlike a lot of places where you go, a lot of the art and the craft work in Gale, in Gal, is genuinely authentic. 
go a lot of places and it's fake stuff from China, etc, etc. But a lot of this, I think, is genuinely made here by the people who are selling it. So I always advise to put some money back into the community where you go to. And, oops, I'm going to break my neck on this rope. We're just working our way now down to the fort walls. The old cannon, there's a shopping precinct here as well. And see a little bit of the seaside. Aurora Bastion which is the east facing one and the smallest out of all along the fort walls. Beautiful view all across the bay. So the bastions are where the cannons were that were used to protect the fort. Okay, just next to the lighthouse is a beautiful golden sandy beach with some blue, blue sea. I'm now very happy because I've had my toes in and I've been through a paddle. A wave just got me and soaked my trainers thoroughly. <laughs> oh, funny. Well, yeah, come here, maybe bring a beer to the beach, bring some food, sit by the shore, under some trees in the shade for an hour, pass away a little bit of the day. Small beach, few locals here. It was beautiful. Very nice beach as you can see. Shallow also, good for swimming. Well worth a visit while you're in Gattle Fort. Also a few locals selling some drinks and small snacks. Yeah, just bring some food, some snacks, some drinks and enjoy some beautiful Indian Ocean sea under some palm trees with that view to look at. Beautiful, amazing. There's also some toilets male and female changing rooms also on the beach so you can get changed into your swimsuit or your bikini and enjoy the water all along the beach there are piles and piles of beautiful coral it's come from somewhere and it's sad to see that it's dead but amazing it's got my feet wet again absolutely not fun so all the way around Gal Fort are the fort walls they are about 10 15 feet high um, protecting the fort from all um, all assailants really Gal was one of the most badly affected parts of Sri Lanka during the tsunami in 2004 which um, killed 35,000 inhabitants very sad Ironically, the walls that have been here for 400, 500 years stood firm and they didn't even budge. A feat of 500 year old engineering. Fell down now and got even wetter. Happy days. The road we're walking down now is Peddler Street which is one of the main shopping streets, lots of little boutiques, loads of cafes and restaurants and it dissects the fort area from one side from the east to the west. So the hotel that we stayed in Gala Fort is called the Archers Fort. So it's a renovated Dutch colonial building. Rooms are beautiful. Little outside seating area. Rooms are very nice. Beautiful private bathroom. Breakfast good. Um, beautiful building. The manager, owner, really helpful. This is a gentleman here. Okay. Very helpful and the high. Please come in. Highly I just want God. Highly recommended place to stay if you are in Gaul. Beautiful. Thank you. Just came back to our hotel to have a beautiful 
lemon iced tea. Get out of the sun for 10 minutes and cool down. So I've finished the main of the hotel, 550 rupees. Finish these off, cool down, and we'll go and see the rest of what Gal has to offer. Cricket is a big thing in Sri Lanka and India and Asia in general. So behind me is the Gal Cricket Ground. It's one of the oldest cricket grounds in the world. The oldest in Sri Lanka, opened in 1876. Um, if you like cricket, come down, check it out, have a look inside. Sri Lankan team not doing so well these days, but in history, a fantastic team. Come and check the ground out if you're passing. It's also the most picturesque cricket ground in the world because it's next to the sea. One of the things to come and see is the Gal Lighthouse, uh, onshore lighthouse. It's the oldest lighthouse in Sri Lanka, opened in 1843. I think somewhere else in Gal there is a the site of the old lighthouse from the like 1700s, I believe. But this one well worth a visit, just next to the beach. Not sure if you can go up it or not. Uh, it looks like you can actually. But I'll check that out, I'll leave some link in the description box below. I'll tell you the fees if you have to pay. Also behind me there are some snake charmers, guys got, there's a few of them around in Gal. This guy's got a cobra, king cobra and some kind of python. He wants to wrap it around your neck, play a flute for the cobra to be out of the basket. Just seeing one guy, Lucy's just seeing one guy give him some money to see the cobra and he's just told him no, that's not enough money. So I don't like going rate for a cobra, but um, come and check it out if that's what you want to do. It's more than three dollars apparently. <laughs> Cheap price to die. Just a little way up from the lighthouse is a place called Flag Rock, Flag Rock Bastion. Uh, Pre-lighthouse being built, it was a place where people would stand with lights and flags and muskets to warn all the ships from the rocks. You can also jump from here. It's a company called Crazy Jumpers. I'm not convinced looking over the side that there is anywhere, anywhere at all that you'd like to jump from into the water. Especially this guy over here is a braver man than me. Maybe Lucy do it. Lucy likes jumping off high things. Um, check out our video for um, absolutely no idea where we're. Siki Ho, we were when, in the Philippines. Siki Ho in the Philippines, we were when Lucy jumps off a 25 meter high thing into a very shallow pool. But just look at this. It's not a place to jump, but I'll leave a link in the description box below for the company that does the jumps, should you want to try it out yourself. However, it is worth coming up to Flag Rock just for some beautiful views over the Indian Ocean and the surrounding areas of Galay. I'm a Sri Lankan crazy jumper. This is my, my friend. Um, he's the guy on the poster that you're showing me about who jumps. It's his business, he's living to jump off this rock. Um, looks jump now. scary to me. You're going to jump now? Yes, my work is a pay. You have pay money for a job. You come back next time and I'll jump with you. Today, look, today. Can help it to my work. No? Tell them how safe it is. To my job. So that's the end of our time in Gal. Short and sweet. You probably only need 24 hours to be quite honest to come and see it and wander around. Lots to do, lots to see. Most of the things are in the fort area, so you can do them quite quickly. Lots of things to do. 
Uh, there's a few other things on the main street, maybe three kilometres outside town, there's quite a few bars, uh, kind of surf clubs that back onto the beach. I can have a nice cold beer overlooking the sea. Yeah. Which, which we did last night, which took about five hours to walk there. Lucy said it's just around the corner. It's not just around the corner. No, it's it was about three kilometres. I got it completely wrong. It was my mistake. I four got a blister too. Four kilometres. So you get tuk tuk into the town uh, on the main street of Gal. It's, um, as I say, four kilometres. There's plenty of bars, restaurants, local places you can eat yeah, and drink. Yeah, loads of surf schools and places to rent surfboards by the look of it too. Welcome back. Today we are in Matara, a town on the south coast of Sri Lanka. We're going to show you best things to do and best things to eat while you're in Matara. Just made the journey from Gal to Matara, um, taking about an hour. Just got to our room. Look at this room. And the best bit, just look what's outside this door. The place we stayed in Matara was the Secret Beach Hotel, right on the beach with a friendly team and lots of great sunset opportunities. Stick around to the end of the video where we visit the famous Sri Lankan stilt fisherman, an ancient practice and a must see in your visit to Sri Lanka. Just jumped into our trusty tuk-tuk to head to our first destination. If you want to see how to hire or drive your own tuk-tuk in Sri Lanka then you should definitely check out the links to our videos in the description box below. First stop on the Matara things to do is Matara Paravai Dua Temple. So this is a Buddhist temple. You have to walk across a little bridge, it's on an island. Um, sea is all surrounded, the waves are crashing up against it, it's really nice. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Sri Lanka and Asia travel videos. We will leave the links in the description box below and the information and locations of all the amazing places that we visited and stayed. Although a little rundown, construction works happening, so all the things you normally see in the temple are kind of shoved away in a corner. There's no monks there, there's one little guy collecting some money. It's supposed to be free entry, but you have to buy a 1,000 rupee donation ticket. So it's 500 per person, and it's a donation towards the restoration. And it says on the ticket, it, it wishes you good blessings for donating. It's going to take money. a long time to restore. I can only assume that from the tsunami it was badly damaged and they're just trying the best to put it back together. I do walk across the island by a temporary bridge. Looks like there was a permanent bridge at one time, but that looks like also was destroyed in the tsunami. Yeah, you um, have to take your shoes off when you get there, and there's a little man then asking for some more domain. donations for looking after your shoes. I mean, I'm sure you could just leave them anywhere, but... but I'm sure it'll be beautiful when it's finished and restored. across from the temple is Matara bus station. From here there are buses available to all places in Sri Lanka. There's also some local cafes with some great authentic food choices. We went for a full place of traditional curry and rice with some sambals on the side. Some kutu roti, which is a traditional Sri Lankan dish consisting of a chopped roti, meat curry dish such as beef, mutton, seafood, chicken or pork, along with some scrambled egg, onions and lots of chilies. A very delicious, cheap, popular snack in Sri Lanka. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. We would love to hear from you. Two minute bus journey or a 10 minute walk around the corner from the bus station is Star Fort, an impressive 500 year old defence left over from the Dutch colonisation. It's a star, it's a fort, it's surrounded by a huge moat, um, it's a six pointed star. In the centre there is a well that used to provide all the water for the surrounding areas. Let's have a look. walk around the top of the fort you can see the holes where the cannons used to be there was two on each side of the star this one is free to get into you just have to sign your name on the way in there's two kind of museum rooms with loads of artefacts in, some of them dating back as early as the 1460s, which is unbelievable that they're still intact. You can also walk around the top as well. Let's go and see what's next. A few minutes away we heard about a local beach that we thought we'd go and check out on the way to our next destination. One of the things to do in Matara is Polina Beach. It's really popular with the locals, there's loads of stalls selling rubber rings and like snorkel stuff for hire, loads of coral washed up on the beach as well, there's a coral reef where the waves are breaking so it's quite a nice bay to swim in, it's really calm the water. You can also do whale watching and you can also do whale watching and boat hire from here. Probably see some turtles maybe if you hire a snorkel and get out towards where the reef is. It's a very small beach, very 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 local. It's very popular. Probably not somewhere you'd like to visit for a great length of time, but worth welcome to have a quick look and see what it's all about. There's also a small Buddhist temple just off the beach. Probably midweek, the beach is a lot quieter. Probably some nice time to get some quiet time, bring a book, and relax for a while. Sand's really nice, and the water's shallow for a nice dip or a swim. Also in Polina Beach, there are a handful of budget hotels. Maybe somewhere to check out if you wanted to stay somewhere by the sea. Another one of the historical buildings to see is the Old Dutch Trade Centre. It's special because it's in a T-shape, in a T-shape even. It's got whitewashed columns and um, a tiled roof with red tiles. Tiles on the roof are known as Petit Ulu. Um, 
they must be made locally because a lot of the historic buildings all have them on. We are now going to try and find an ancient Buddhist temple that we heard about. Next stop on the things to do in Matara is the Waharaharina temple. This is a Buddhist temple and it is filled with lots of paintings inside. Filled with 23,000 pictures of the life of Buddha. Let's go inside and check it out. Shall we say? I don't know about whistle stop, we've been in there maybe an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So it's donation again. So the suggested donation is 500 rupees per person. We were met at the door by a monk who was decidedly drunk. Yes, there was a, a bottle of something, maybe the local spirit sat on the side as we walked in. However, he took us around the temple, all the floors, all around, took maybe over an hour. Uh, showed us all the things, explained everything the best he could in his broken English between his um, slurring. Between his slurring, but overall, very, very nice place to visit. Yeah, um, we also got blessed as well and got a white, tied a white string round our arms. It tied a white string round our arms and blessed us, so that was quite nice. An absolutely as well. enormous Buddha, 25 meters tall, it says. He says it's 39. <laughs> Who knows how big it is? He's lived in this temple for 43 years, he says. So it's a long time. Yes, there are 10 monks that actually live here. Um, there were some of them. We kind of came towards the end of the day. Some of them were cleaning and sweeping up. But you have to take your shoes off on entrance. And obviously all the monks are barefoot, so they just waltz around on any floor. Doesn't matter what the temperature or the surface. And we were like pottering around behind trying to catch up. But definitely a worthwhile stop on your quick day tour of Matara. Yeah, really nice temple to come and visit. Back in the tuk-tuk, we're going to drive down to the coast and check out Sri Lanka's tallest lighthouse. Then, as promised, we head back up the coast in search of the famous still fisherman. Actually, we should have done this trip in reverse. It would have made it a lot easier and faster. Just behind us and located six kilometers southeast of Matara town is Dondra Head Lighthouse. So this lighthouse is on the most southerly tip of Sri Lanka and it is one of the tallest lighthouses in both Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. Built in 1890. So the lighthouse is 49 meters in height. Looking at the state of the rocks and the rough seas out there, it's well needed in this area. Yeah, 100%. There are quite a lot of boats out there and people fishing, but I would definitely want this lighthouse in the dark, 100%. But somewhere to come and sit and enjoy the view. There are some beautiful views, some palm trees and blue green seas. Yeah, the sea is beautiful. Also, the other side just behind us is a restaurant overlooking the bay, the beach. It's a small little beach area, could probably chill and relax or have some nice local food overlooking the water. One of the things you need to see while you're in Matara province.
behind us are the famous stilt fishermen of Kagala. I don't think there's that much of it going in anymore. I think it's more a tourist opportunity, but well worth coming to have a look. They would do want paying to perch on the poles. 400 rupees per person, we just paid for five people living in the same house, 2,000 rupees. When it comes to exploring Sri Lanka, there are some ultimate destinations that you just can't miss. One of them is the beautiful, stunning coastal town of Marissa. From lounging on pristine beaches, to embarking on exciting whale watching excursions, or hitting the waves on a surfboard, Marissa really has something for everyone. We start our journey by exploring the iconic Parrot Rock, which offers breathtaking views over the Indian Ocean and the surrounding coastline. We then indulge in some local flavours with a taste of authentic Sri Lankan curry and rice at a beachside restaurant along Marissa Beach. We then seek out some Instagram worthy moments by heading to Coconut Tree Hill to capture stunning sunset views amidst swaying palm trees. Moving then on to Secret Beach for a secluded paradise, we then soak up some sun on Welligamma Beach which is well known for its surfing spots and laid back vibe. Just going to jump into our tuk tuk to head to our first location which is Coconut Tree Hill. See you there. If you're looking to make the most of your trip to Marissa, here are some ultimate travel tips to help you explore this beautiful coastal town like a pro. Perfect first stop on the things to do in Marissa is this place called Coconut Tree Hill. Yeah, it is a beautiful little secluded spot that sticks out into the water just covered in palm trees. The view is spectacular, you can just see everywhere, it's perfect. Really windy, really noisy, the waves crashing against the sea. A little beach down there, we can have a fantastic swim by the look of things. Really, really nice. It's apparently a perfect spot to watch the sunset and I do believe it gets quite busy at sunset, as you can imagine. But even in the middle of the day, it is just beautiful. And of course, a perfect spot for your Insta pictures. Oh, yes. I wish Lewis would be taking about a thousand now. <laughs> Very nice. in this beautiful bluey green water. As we were just swimming in the sea on this tiny little beach next to Coconut Hill, a turtle was there! An actual wild turtle just popped his head up and was swimming around quite happily. Two turtles. Amazing. They're so happy. Maybe bring a pair of goggles, have a little swim out and you'll be able to see the turtle even closer. Links in the description box below are the Google Map locations of all the places we visited in this video. Coconut Hill, beautiful. Nice little swim on the way down, spotted a couple of sea turtles. There's a bar at the bottom called Sunset Bar, uh, cocktails and soft drinks, some food menu as well. <coughs> little swing, some picturesque Insta pictures. Nothing better on a hot sunny day than a cold Coke in a glass bottle. We head next to Parrot Rock and then to Marissa Beach. Parrot Rock's about 900 metres away. So jump back in the truck and find that Coconut Hill. Beautiful, perfect.
just parked on the main road, there's no direct access for vehicles to Parrot Rock and down a little alleyway well, you could probably drive a scooter down if you wanted to, I don't know if there's any parking or not um, and the beach is right there huh. not sure where the rock is or the parrot for that matter but let's go around this corner and see behind me is Parrot Rock there's a little walkway over to the rock itself for some very um, not exciting ladders shall we say looks like going to fall on her ass definitely Beautiful little bench to sit on and you can stare at this view for as long as you want to. Lucy became super brave in the end and came up to the top of Park Rock all by herself. My knees are shaking. <laughs> Maybe inspired by the six year old who just did it before her. But she's here and it's a beautiful view. It is really beautiful but my knees are like jelly. So Parrot Rock, it's a rock. There's no parrots. No, it's, it's cool. called Parrot Rock because it's all red. Like dark red colour like a parrot would be. And it's just a lookout point and you can see Coconut Hill on one side. You can see Marissa Beach on the other. And the wide open sea in front of you. Leave a comment below if you have ever seen a red parrot. I've seen green parrots and blue parrots and Those yellow parrots. parrots. Never seen a red parrot in my life. Prove me wrong, guys. The truth is out. Lucia came up to Parrot Rock. She said, I did it for you, but I need some food now. <laughs> so let's go see what we can find it to eat uh, locally. Just at the back of us is Marissa Beach. Maybe there's something there we can find. Yeah, to there's eat. loads of bars and restaurants on the beach. Let's see what we can find. It's famous for its coconuts, especially its king coconuts. So everybody is selling them the side of the road on the beach. This one was 300 on the beach. Here, he chopped the top off and it's full of coconut water. Stopped at the side of the road at a little restaurant. It's all you can eat, rice and curry. It's all vegetarian. We wanted chicken curry, but alas, never mind. Um, but we've got rice, lentil curry, there's a potato and pineapple curry, I think. Possibly a jackfruit one. And then a salad that's a bit like a papaya salad effect with different vegetables in, but it's all super tasty. I just love it, actually. Oh, it's good for a loading. Just been back up 
got a second plateful. So there is a dal curry, a cucumber curry, a potato curry, a spicy salad, and then poppadoms and rice, obviously. So this, apparently, it's cucumber curry. Never would have thought in my life, but it's really good. Some of that delicious now. meters away from Parrot Rock is Marissa Beach. Lots of cafes and restaurants at the side of the beach. We just went into one, had an all-you-can-eat curry and rice buffet, 900 rupees, which is about two pounds, like two dollars fifty. Very nice, beautiful, with an amazing view of the beach. Sell beer as well in most of these places. Come down and wine and chill. Great sea, some great sand, and I'll show you that in a second. Marissa's Secret Beach is a small secluded cove in a little bay just around the corner from Marissa Main Beach. Drove the tuk-tuk down some dubious back roads and footpaths. A few near misses on the way. We finally, I think, arrived at the Secret Beach. Not sure how secret it is anymore. Lots of signposts, Secret Beach this way, Secret Beach this way. You access it from the main road down some windy roads and dirt tracks. Uh, be very careful if you're going down there in a tuk-tuk or a bike. Can be a little bit dangerous, but we're here. Let's go and check it out. It's supposed to be one of the best beaches in Sri Lanka. Definitely the best beach in Marissa, apparently. But let's see. The other secret, secret thing about Secret Beach in Marissa is this. So on the way out of Secret Beach, on the left hand side there's a small road. You park there, you walk up a few hundred metres and there is sunset viewpoint. High above the sea, perfect view to catch a fantastic sunset. You want 100? Yeah. Why? 100. Parking money? Yeah, parking. Parking money, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Nice one, bye. Bye, bye. So it's a little area at the beach. It's very nice, actually. There's a little swimming area that's protected by some rocks. Great place to swim. The sand's like a thick, corally type grainy sand. It's very nice. There's also a beach bar there. 
Um, called Secret of Beach Bar. Strangely enough, they sell beer, food, and soft drinks. Play some nice music, great place to hang out, spend a few hours there. Um, not so secret, I guess, anymore, did you mind the amount of people that's there? I'll leave all the information how to get there in the description box below, even leave you a link to Google Maps. Quite straightforward to find if you know the rough direction that you're going. Wellyama Beach is the surfing capital of Sri Lanka. There's lots of surf schools, uh, surfboard hire. Apparently the waves are much more manageable than a little bit further down the beach at Marissa. Yeah, this is supposed to be really good everywhere says for doing your surf school and learning because the waves are smaller and the current isn't as strong because it's a bigger bay. And as you look around now you can only see 30, 40, 50 people learning to surf. Yeah, um, yeah if that's your thing, this is the right place. Not sure how much a surfing lesson costs. We'll try to find out and leave you some information below. Yeah, I think there's loads then of obviously bars and cafes, quite a few little hotels dotted around as well. It's quite nice actually in the sand, it's super soft the sand here. which is run by a doctor I believe who rescues snakes from people's houses and also wild snakes and draws the venom out of them to create antivenom. What a guy, what a guy. <laughs> yeah, About 135 people die every year from snake bites in Sri Lanka so he's doing his bit. <laughs> I'm not one of them so far. Say so they'll guarantee you see a blue whale. Sometimes it can take four, five, six, seven hours to see a blue whale but I don't know. Yeah they leave at about 6 a.m. in the morning uh, they provide you breakfast a lot of them by the looks of it and they say you can also see dolphins, other types of whales and of course turtles. If you like whales though it's probably a once in a lifetime chance you get to see a blue whale, jump on a boat in Sri Lanka and for 50 bucks someone will make your dream come true. Other things you can do, you are, can go to turtle hatcheries and help release some of the baby turtles into the water if you are there at the right time, which sounds really fun. Don't forget to check out our things to do in Matara and things to do in Gal Sri Lanka videos. We'll leave a link to those in the description box below or they'll be up above. At the side of Matara Beach, there are quite a few street food stalls that are popped up as the sun's starting to go down. This name, DSC? DSC? No. No? One A. Oh. Ah, okay. just pulled over and we've got a chicken, a cheese and egg sandwich. It is the heaviest thing and it is super hot as well but let's see what it's like. Chicken, cheese and egg sandwich. So, piece a couple of eggs, put some eggs on the grill, slice of bread on and some onion, some lettuce, some, um, some spices, some sauces and some cabbage I think. And a chicken breast or chicken burger, then some cheese, and then melt it, some more egg, and some more spicy sauce. That's naughty. 
see how dirty. <laughs> that was hangover food right there. So 600 rupees each and it weighs a kilogram, it must do. Uh, which is about £1.50. Bargain! One final thing you can do is the easiest of all. Spend some time on the beautiful beach. Amatoa Beach runs pretty much over there from the temple that we showed you last week to just behind me here. It's almost all the way to the Dondra Head Lighthouse. So it's a beautiful sweeping beach with some golden coloured sand intermingled by some black volcanic sand. So we've been here for a few days, the sun sets over there by the temple, just above the temple. Don't know what it's going to be like tonight. It's been fantastic the last few nights. And with that, we're going to end the video right here. We'll try and catch the sunset and have a cold beer. Hopefully it's a good one for you guys. Hopefully you got some value from the video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Don't forget to check out the other Sri Lanka videos in the description box below. And we'll see you in the next one.